In this episode, we're going to take a quick look at getting started in color grading, color correction, and we're going to do that by looking at a couple of free things. Number one, picture styles or picture controls, which uh, flatten your image, and we'll discuss what that means in just a minute, and also a color grading app called DaVinci Resolve Lite. Check this out. So color grading is really to help me kind of fine tune the final look of my image, and that this whole workflow around color grading starts before you even start shooting. So it really goes into your lighting design and then how you expose um, with having in mind what your final look, your final desire <laughs> is in terms of the look at least. And so let me give you a background. So I've been, re I've been reading this book here called Color Correction Handbook by Alexis Van Herkman. Um, it's quite good. A new edition just came out within the last few days here. This is it on uh, Amazon. And I'll go ahead and put a link for that down below in the description. And um, you might find that really helpful. You might not, depending on your learning style. Um, I found it pretty helpful. It, it, it's better at describing the overall process and not so much into the nitty gritty details of how to do that in DaVinci Resolve. Alexis Van Herkman has another uh, video training that he, where he goes into a lot more depth on how to use uh, DaVinci Resolve. I haven't looked at that yet. I'm planning on probably picking that up here in the next little bit and kind of digging through it a little bit as I kind of develop my color grading skills. That's another thing as a, <laughs> as a background. I am not an expert on color grading and color correction. Um, I'm just getting my feet wet, so that's why this is very much an intro and kind of what I found so far and looking for feedback from others as well. Now, part of that, as I mentioned before, you have to start before you even start shooting. On my Nikon, I'm using this flat picture control. On the Canon side, you can also use these. There are also others out there. Probably the most prominent of them on the Canon side is the um, Technicolor Cinestyle, which I, was, which I used on my Canon 60D as well. Um, I was really frustrated when I first started using these because it was it gave you this image out of the camera which was very muddy and difficult to work with. And so let me just kind of give you um, a view as to what I'm talking about here. Um, here is DaVinci Resolve Lite. And let me just give you a walkthrough so you can see what these, uh, well, actually, let me just jump ahead a little bit and show you right now. Here is what the image straight out of my camera looks like. And you'll notice that the black background is actually a dark gray. You will notice that the the overall image just looks a little bit muddy and not that awesome. And we, you know, we got the lighting right. Everything's looking good as far as lighting, but the, the overall image just doesn't pop. It doesn't look awesome. So let me do a quick walkthrough here of DaVinci Resolve so you can see my basic process right now. Again, I'm mostly just doing color correction, nothing terribly uh, stylized in terms of looks. I'm really just trying to get a nice, crisp, clean look pretty close to reality. So the first thing you do is you come in here to your media and you drop the clips that you want to actually correct or grade into your media pool down here. You come over into this edit section and what I did is I just took these two clips, dragged them down onto the timeline. Here you can actually trim them up a little bit. So I'll typically trim them up. I'll keep the, the hand clap in there because I'm going to sync up my uh, audio after I bring it into my editor. So I actually do this color grading first and then bring it into my editor. There are lots of different workflows. The typical workflow for a sequence, if you're doing a short film or even a, a full a feature length film, um, is to do the editing first and then color grade it. Since I'm doing short spots, I actually find it easier to, to bring the clips in here and do it first because I'm not usually shooting sequences that have a ton of different scenes and a ton of different lighting scenarios. So usually pretty straightforward for me. Um, once I've done that, we come over into the color section. This is where the magic really sort of happens as far as I'm concerned. So I've got these two clips and, and you'll, you'll notice the lighting is, is identical on these two. So I should be able to grade them together. And to do that, all I need to do is select both of them and I can add them to a group. And then anytime I make a change to one, I'm actually grading both of them. The, the settings that I change will get applied to both. So again, as we look at this, you'll notice that we have sort of a grayish background. It's not, it's supposed to be black, but it, in fact, there's some light spilling on it. And so it has sort of a gray look. And because we're shooting video, there's a lot of digital noise in this. It's a, it's definitely a, um, one of the darker shadows. And so the sensor 
definitely shows its noise issues in this area. So really the look we're going for is I want to crush those, those blacks and then I want to make everything else kind of pop in terms of contrast. So the benefit here is I shot this with a flat picture style and the benefit of a flat picture style is that when it records, it protects your shadows and it protects your highlights. So it sort of rolls them off so that you don't clip. And what that allows you to do then is when you bring it in to do the color grading in the end, you can place those shadows and highlights exactly where you want them to get the look you want. So that's really what, from my perspective, what using a flat picture style is all about and what color grading is all about. So you can see this is what we came in with from the camera with our flat picture style. So the first thing I want to do is let's crush those blacks uh, as a start and then let's get our highlights and our midtones where we want. Now. In this interface here, the, the color wheels down here are called Lift, Gamma, and Gain. I typically like to think of them as shadows, midtones, and highlights, um, whatever works for you, but the technical terms that DaVinci Resolve uses is Lift, Gamma, Gain. So the first thing I wanna do is just change the luminance of our um, shadows here. I wanna crush these blacks. And so um, actually, let me just uh, also, what I didn't do before is pull up the scopes and the scopes are absolutely critical okay so with our scopes up here these are super helpful obviously for a variety of reasons this is our vector scope this is our rgb parade scope so these are kind of like waveforms for each of the color channels red green and blue and on these uh these little waveforms here you can see this uh very prominent uh sort of shelf here at the bottom or base at the bottom and that represents the black background black backdrop and you can see that it's not all the way down at zero, so it's not pure black. And so what we really wanna do is reduce the luminosity of the shadows here until we get this down to zero so that it is pure black. So I'm just gonna grab this wheel right here and we're gonna crank it down, keeping our eye on the scopes till we're down in the range where we want. And we have crushed those blacks. And I think right about there does it, you'll notice, okay, we've pretty much got it down there at zero. It's looking pretty good here. We've gotten rid of the, sh the um, you could see some wrinkles in it before, and we've taken care of most of the noise by crushing the blacks like that. So when we've done that now, you'll notice our, our mid-tones are looking kind of uh, black luster. They're not looking awesome. So I'm judging those mid-tones mid by the, the light on the face here. So I'm gonna come here into my mid-tones and let's just bump up, bump those up some until we get into a, good spot again keeping my eye on the RGB parade there I don't want to go so hot that um, things start clipping and that's pretty good arguably you know it's a matter of taste at this point um, I might not go that hot I might just back it down just a little bit and then let's bring our highlights up just to make everything sort of pop so here we'll just play with it a little bit Again, making sure that we don't clip. So we're gonna watch these spikes here at the top of each of the waveforms to make sure we don't exceed the, the max value, which in this case is 1023, 1024. Um, so that's about uh, where I like the luminosity level set. Then I can just bump the saturation here. So I might bump that up just to bring the color back into my face. That's another thing that the picture style does is it tends to pull the saturation back a little bit so that you have a little bit more room in post-production to move that around. So probably that's a, that's a look that I'd be aiming for. And you can see it was a pretty straightforward process. All of this is dependent on a few things. You've gotta get your color right when you're shooting. That is to say, you have to get your white balance set correctly. And we've got a previous video, go check that out if you haven't already. And secondly, you've gotta get your lighting right and your exposure right. So you can't go, um, you know, this. You, you can't fix everything in post. Um, and here you'll notice all we were really doing is sort of fine tuning the image, crushing the blacks just a little bit, and then fine tuning the, um, the mid-tones and the highlights to get the overall contrast and punch that we wanted. We didn't even change colors. You could of course change colors if for example, you got your white balance off just a little bit, you can usually correct that. So sometimes with the fluorescent lights, for example, you get a little bit of a green cast. And what you can do is come into this interface here. So we have our color wheels. We also have this interface. And I could just in the in the mid-tones and the in the highlights, maybe even in the lift, um, just pull those greens back independent of the other channels, just a tiny bit to help correct. Now, if you're way off, good luck. There's, <laughs> you know, you're dealing with compressed footage if you're shooting with a camera that doesn't shoot raw video, which is most of the cameras that most of us are using. 
Um, so if you're way off, you're not necessarily going to have um, a fighting chance of getting it back to where it looks awesome. But if you shoot it right, if you get your exposure right, and you get your white balance right, and you get exposed for your, um, you know, for your midtones and highlights, then usually you can get the final look that you're going for, as we showed you here. So I hope you found that helpful. Go ahead and check out DaVinci Resolve Lite. Um, as I mentioned before, this is a free download, which is amazing. Um, this application has so much more to it. I, we have not even begun to scratch the surface here. Um, it does all of its processing in 32-bit color, so you're getting the most latitude you can possibly get out of your compressed video footage. And um, the overall effect is awesome. Oh yeah, of course, obviously when you're done with that, um, what you do is come in here and uh, let me just run through the settings I would use to export these to, to new files that you could then bring into your editor and cut them together. So um, for example, here I'll choose, I want individual source clips. So I wanna keep this clip separate because um, I may wanna reorder them or whatever. You can, you can do it as a single clip if you want to, just make all of these into one big clip, um, whatever's your preference there. I typically will use QuickTime ProRes 422, which is, um, I believe, 10-bit color. So that's, um, you know, we're coming from 8-bit 8 8 footage, so 10-bit on the way out is probably good enough for most of the things we're doing. And then what I do here is I also tell it to render the audio. The reason I do that is I don't sync up my separately recorded audio until I get into my editor. So I need to keep the reference audio tied to these. So we do that. Um, I just choose a directory to put that to. And then once I, let's see, and then I just use the source file name. So I use the same file names and put them in a different directory. I add that to the render queue, start the render, and it generates those new files. So that's all there really is to it. And it's um, it's a, definitely a part of my workflow that's evolving. I have a ton to learn. If any of you have input on tips that uh, make this process a little better or kind of clarify for other people, um, go ahead and leave those in the comments down below. Likewise, if you've got questions, we'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, go ahead and do that and we'll continue to cover things relating to lighting, sound, and color grading in future episodes. Thanks for checking out the show.